Hi everybody and welcome to the Central Nervous System um, Structure and Function video. And on this video we're going to look at what the Central Nervous System does and how it does it. So um, the Central Nervous System receives and responds to information and that's it. It may sound pretty simple um, but it's pretty elaborate. And the two organs that are responsible for receiving and responding to information are the ones in blue, are the brain and the spinal cord. That's it. That's the central nervous system. And so you can see that there are some things that have direct, the brain has direct control over, but there are many things that the spinal cord has direct control over, or indirect control over, so to speak. Uh, but we're not going to look at each individual one in all its detail because we could spend forever doing that. We're just going to look at how the central nervous system fits in with everything else in the nervous system. So here's our CNS, and the other half of the nervous system is the peripheral nervous system. So it's all the other nerves that are in your body that aren't in your brain or spinal cord. So basically, the PNS is going to send information to the spinal cord. The spinal cord is going to relay it up to the brain, and that's really all the spinal cord is going to do is going to relay that information, collect it from all these sources, merge it together, and send it to the brain. The thalamus will get it, try and figure out where it's supposed to go in the brain, and then the brain processes it, figures out the response needed, and sends it back down. And so the spinal cord then will, will divide it to where it needs to go. If it's something that's going to your heart or your digestive organs, your blood vessels, that's going to go the autonomic route. Um, and so then the autonomic route can either say, we need to speed up those things or we need to slow down those things. Or perhaps the response is going this route, um, which means it's going to enact a response in your skeletal muscles or your special senses, like your eyes and your ears. So we can really see the central nervous system is key. It not only gathers that information, but it processes it and it sends out a response to your peripheral nervous system so that you can respond to things in your environment. And because the central nervous system has such an important role, it's protected pretty well by things called meninges. These are layers around the actual nervous tissue. In this case, the spinal cord nerves and the actual brain. Now, the first outermost layer, which I love, is my favorite. It's called the dura mater. If you translate this from German to English, it literally means tough mother. This is the toughest material you could possibly think of. If you held it in your hands and pulled it apart, you couldn't rip it. And this is, if you look at the, this is like the outermost layer of the, those meninges because then you have your, your uh, cranium, your bones, as well as your vertebrae. Now within the dura mater, there's a next layer, and that's called the arachnoid. Um, if you look at the brain here, there's actually a little space um, for blood vessels and fluid. And then the innermost layer that's actually surrounding the nervous tissue is the pia mater. You can see it sits right on top of the brain right here. So those are the meninges used to protect. But there's even more protection, and that's called cerebrospinal fluid. In the case of the spinal cord, it sits in that little arachnoid space between the pia and the arachnoid layers, or the, and it does for the brain as well. But in the brain, it also sits in things called ventricles, which are open cavities within the brain where this fluid kind of um, nourishes and supports and cushions the brain tissue. Now, in some individuals, these ventricles don't drain properly, and so they get flu that, that CS fluid builds up in their brain. This condition is called hydrocephalus. Again, it literally means water on the brain. Now, in our country and many other countries, we see this um, happen pretty frequently, and this is something we can treat so that these symptoms, uh, so that these individuals don't have that swelling of the, the brain cavity. And in fact, this swelling can cause uh, brain damage in certain areas. So, what we do is babies born with this simply get a shunt put in where that cerebral spinal fluid is drained into their abdominal region, their digestive region, and it's flushed out. So they never experience those symptoms, and this will be with them for the rest of their life. But back to the overall picture of the central nervous system. You said it receives information and responds to it. 
Now here's how the peripheral nervous system in a little more detail is involved and gets integrated with the central nervous system. So if we want to lift up this glass and take a drink, we have the central nervous system, the brain, and the spinal cord here. This represents the central nervous system in green. We have sensory information coming in. So this is still your PNS, your peripheral nervous system. But it's coming in, so we call it a sensory input. And then we respond, we figure out what we want to do, so we send out another message, and that's a motor response to lift that glass of water. And this is also your PNS. And what this actually correlates to now, if we look at the the, the the central nervous system control, take a look at this. So all those nerves, the first ones, the ones on top, the sensory input for the sensory neurons, and um, so they're carrying information to the brain and spinal cord. And let's see, and here are the motor neurons which are enacting a response from your brain and spinal cord. Now you have, of all these nerves, so you have seven pairs, excuse me, 12 pairs of cranial nerves. So one that directly go to and from those organs, like in your eyes, like the optic nerve. It carries information to the brain and it, and it has neurons that carry back to the eye. And then you have 31 pairs, many more, of spinal nerves, which control you know all of these things here, your heart, lungs, as well as all of your skeletal muscles. But they both work the same way. They have sensory neurons and motor neurons carrying to and from, from the sensory information to the brain spinal cord and then back, the motor neurons. Now we're going to end really briefly with looking at these diseases and disorders of the central nervous system. And so the first one is deals probably only with the spinal cord. So if you sever the spinal cord at a certain area, say right here, um, you can still receive sensory information, uh, but it doesn't get any farther. It doesn't go up to your brain for processing. And, and so then you can't enact anything back. There's no motor response back, and so you can't move those particular areas affected. In the case of a stroke, this is like a heart attack in your brain. There's some sort of blockage in a blood vessel in your brain, and so if there's no blood flow, there's no oxygen, and that part of the brain tissue um, dies. And so then it cannot process information and send information out where it needs to go. In cerebral palsy, this is where you, you lose voluntary motor performance. Basically, you're losing skeletal muscle control. And that's not due to something happening in your in your sarcomeres, in your skeletal muscle fibers, is actually um, a disorder that affects the motor pathway. So those, those messages that are being sent to the skeletal muscles in your, from your central nervous system are disrupted. Next one is ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, better known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, he had this and, and as well as some famous people like Stephen Hawking have this today. And basically this is a, a progressive, so this is something that starts out not too bad and gets worse and worse, but it's again, it's affecting your motor neurons. So if your motor neurons are affected, that's gonna affect your skeletal muscle. And you slowly lose control over that. In Alzheimer's, you can see there's actual, um, deterioration of brain tissue. And so again, this is progressive. Um, and so the neurons in certain areas uh, get destroyed and they think that in particular, the neurons in the hippocampus get destroyed and the hippocampus is uh, known for its control and regulation of memory. And finally, the last central nervous system disease or disorder we're going to look at here is epilepsy. And epilepsy is usually um, due to seizures and an abnormal electric activity in the brain. It can be caused by a lot of different things. Um, and to be quite honest, there, for all the different types of seizures, we really don't know a lot about epilepsy and what causes those seizures. 
But that's a, an overall look at the central nervous system and how it plays its role in receiving and responding to information. Thanks for listening.